Wouldn't it be great to create a CCNA security virtual lab? For many of us, the answer is yes. In order to really practice the technologies of CCNA security, it helps to have either the live equipment or an emulated lab environment. And what I'd like to do is share with you a quick list of some of the software that I've used in building a virtual lab environment. I'd start off with a host running Windows 7. And Windows 8 can be used, however, it causes additional problems and grief that you have to work through. So if you have a host running Windows 7, that's a great place to start. You'd also want to download and install GNS3 and VirtualBox. Now, if you have a license for VMware, you can go ahead and use VMware Workstation. However, VirtualBox is free, so you can emulate virtual machines inside of your virtual environment. You'd also want to have iOS that's supported by GNS3 for your router support, as well as the ASA software that can be used inside of GNS3. You'd also want a copy of ASDM, which is the graphical user interface that we're going to TFTP over to the virtual hard drive on the virtual ASA so we can use the GUI interface to manage and work with the ASA as well. We'd also want the graphical user interface called Cisco Configuration Professional, either 2.6 or 2.7, really doesn't matter. That's the graphical user interface, Cisco Configuration Professional, that you and I are going to use inside of CCNA Security to go ahead and manage a Cisco router. The TFTP software is really convenient if we need to move files back and forth, for example, between our local hard drive and the flash drive on our virtual ASA. And we'd also want the iOS IPS signatures that are part of iOS-based IPS, as well as the public key file from Cisco that allows us to validate the signature package before we install it as part of an iOS-based IPS solution. So I did some snooping around and I found this guy right here. This is the CCNA security grab bag .zip and it had all these files in it. There's a TFTP server software file. These two files right here is what GNS3 needs to go ahead and emulate an ASA. And for the details on how to configure GNS3 to support the ASA, if you've got those files, go ahead and check out the GNS3 series at CBT Nuggets, which demonstrates exactly how to set up the ASA inside of a GNS3 environment. These two are ASDM versions. You don't need two of them, you only need one. And that's the software that we would copy over to the virtual hard drive of the ASA so we can use the graphical user interface of ASDM. Here's a couple of iOS images that are supported by GNS3. There's a 3700 series running 12.4 and there's a 7200 series running 15.x. And here's a CCP4 version 2.7 of Cisco Configuration Professional. This iOS S456 is a signature package for iOS-based IPS. And this last file down here is the public key from Cisco that's going to be required to implement the iOS-based IPS. So if we did set up a virtual environment for CCNA security practice, this would cover almost everything except for the port security on layer 2 switches, which currently, as of today's date, isn't emulated inside of GNS3 but perhaps in the future that will be as well. Now to be clear, because most of these files are Cisco's creation, I personally cannot distribute these files to you. So I'd like to do a preemptive strike and ask you not to request any of these files from me because they're not mine, they are Cisco's. And my intent here in this video for us is for me to share with you some of the details regarding which files would be needed to build a virtual environment to practice most of CCNA security. Now, for an individual who has these files and wants to go ahead and practice building a virtual environment, check out our GNS3 course at CBT Nuggets. Because in that course, I'll walk you through step-by-step -step of how to integrate adaptive security appliances and iOS routers in GNS3. And for awesome training regarding CCNA security, come check out our CCNA security course at CBT Nuggets. Now there were a couple of tweaks with IE11 to get Cisco Configuration Professional working correctly and I absolutely want to share those with you. In Internet Explorer, if you're using it, go ahead and press the Alt key and that brings up these menu items. From here you're going to select Tools and select Compatibility View Settings and from here you're going to add 127.0.0.1 and click on Add. And what I've discovered will happen if you don't do this and you're running Cisco Configuration Professional, it's going to give you this window that looks like this. It's going to cram everything in the top right here. So it's not even really usable with Cisco Configuration Professional. 
So again, if you're using IE11 and you want Cisco Configuration Professional to work, you definitely need to go ahead and follow those steps. The other thing you'd want to also do if you want to use Cisco Configuration Professional is manage your Java settings. Now to do that, you're going to bring up Control Panel. And in Control Panel, we're going to go to Java 32-bit. We're going to click on the Java tab in the Java Control Panel. I click on View. And you'll notice I'm running a fairly current version of Java, but what I did have to do is add these runtime parameters right here of dash capital X, lowercase mx, 512m. And then go ahead and save that. And that was required in order for Cisco Configuration Professional to work. And on this host machine at the moment, I am running 8.1 of Windows. But we would still use the same value in the Java runtime parameter setting, even if you were running version 7 of Windows. And the same is also true for Internet Explorer. With the Internet Explorer compatibility settings that we had, even if you're running Windows 7 and you're running a newer version of Internet Explorer, you'd also want to set those compatibility settings. So my intent is was to keep this fairly short. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.